In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sister Lucia, um, explaining her good memory of the events that had happened in 1917, and of course before that and after that, she said, as far as I can see, there is this difference between natural and supernatural things. When we are talking to a mere creature, we tend to forget, whereas supernatural things are ever more deeply engraved on the soul. So it is not easy to forget them. That surely is the secret of the four Gospels. God became man and what he said and did was deeply engraved on the souls of the witnesses. And so it is deeply engraved in the Gospels they wrote. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. In them we meet Jesus Christ as he truly was then and as he truly is now. What he said then and what he says now. What he did then and what he does now. He who is eternal has entered time. And what he did in time has become eternal. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. And he's not present in the Gospels in a kind of embalmed state, but living, teaching us now, loving us now, healing us now. My words are spirit and they are life. The four Gospels are the treasure hidden in a field, which when a man finds, he sells all he has in order to buy that field. Well, since in the Gospels we have God the Son, the way to the Father, the source of the Holy Spirit, why do we need the Old Testament and the rest of the New Testament? Why do we need the church? Why do we need sermons and prophecies and apparitions? Well, certainly not in order to keep us from daily living with our Lord in the Gospels, but the exact opposite, to shed light on the Gospels, now on this word, now on that, enabling us to abide in Christ in the Gospels more intimately, more fully and freely and faithfully. So, what light shines from Fatima on the Gospels? On May the 13th, 1917, Our Lady asked the children are you willing to offer yourselves to God and bear all the sufferings he wills to send you as an act of reparation for the sins by which he is offended and of supplication for the conversion of sinners? The children said yes and from Our Lady's opened hands streamed forth light that penetrated our hearts and souls, said Lucia making us see ourselves in God, who was that light, and moving us to say, O Most Holy Trinity, I adore you. My God, my God, I love you in the most blessed sacrament. That is how it should always be with us. That first, the Word of God, 
and then our yes, our faith in the Word, and then the life of the Word entering our hearts and experience. Lucia has said that the rays of light in Mary, coming from Mary, had drawn them on that May Day into the mystery of God. But in June, into the mystery of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Her motherhood, the mystery of the Church, the Bride of Christ, our heart created in order to be recreated, to be transformed from selfishness to love, from natural love to supernatural love. You remember St. Paul says, we shall be changed. The trumpet shall sound and we shall be changed. Speaking of the resurrection of the body. But first there has to come in our life on this earth, the spiritual change, the transformation to loving God with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind and all our strength. And we have the seed of that life of that love within us. But we must give ourselves to the seed's growth until it bursts forth from us in its wonderful fruit. And that's what we see happening in Francisco and Jacinta, as uh, Lucia writes of them. The second part of the secret, the first half was the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and then the second part of the secret was given on July the 13th. And again Our Lady opened her hands, this time to give the children the vision of hell, which was very terrifying, but no more so than the words of Jesus in the Gospels. And he gave those warnings to us as a vital part of his saving work. And to ignore those warnings is to turn a blind eye to the truth and to deprive ourselves of a precious help to our salvation. They are a medicine of which our fallen nature is in desperate need. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The third part of the secret of Fatima was only revealed, of course, 11 years ago by Pope John Paul. The vision of the cross on the mountain and Christ's disciples climbing up the mountain and being united with Christ when they reach the top. And their blood is mingled with his precious blood. And thus, they show us the way of the cross as the ladder to heaven. And Lucia explained, of course, that this doesn't necessarily mean dramatic extremes of penance, but it's a dramatic expression of, for most people, a humble life of love, and little sacrifices uniting our heart with God. The second two parts of the secret of Fatima, we can surely see they're clearly correcting the terrible distortions of the gospel in our time. that have come, most of those distortions, from minimizing what are called the hard sayings of Jesus about the cross and about hell. But when we think of the maternal heart of Mary, 
how, how does that fit into uh, being one of the hard sayings? I remember a boy of about 12 uh, walking with his mother in the town and it was all a bit peculiar because he was always about five yards ahead of her or behind her and after quite a bit of sort of to and fro it turned out that he was ashamed of being seen by any of his, any of his school friends at his mother's side. Well it can seem quite innocent but it isn't really, it, it uh, can become and in fact it is becoming all around us a, a, a bitter rebellion against God and against parents and against any authority. Of course there is a natural independence in growing up but it needn't go that terrible way at all. After the finding in the temple of Jesus at the age of 12, we read, he went down with them to Nazareth and was obedient to them and increased in wisdom and in stature. And in fact, humble obedience is the only way to grow in wisdom and spiritual stature. So perhaps that is, the, is why the Immaculate Heart of Mary is a hard saying for our age. We want to try to build our faith on our own thinking rather than relying on the Word of God and the Holy Spirit and on Our Lady and the saints. They, they teach us humility and obedience and love. Lucia says, the reason why we have little or no love for the rosary is that we have little or no love. Our life on this earth has been given us so that we may become loving sons and daughters of God our Father. St Paul says, when we cry, Abba, Father, it is the Spirit himself bearing witness that we are children of God. Jesus the Son teaches us sonship and daughterhood and gives us the spirit of his own sonship. And he has given his mother to be our mother, to bring us up as her children. And so bring us up as children of God. So let us heed the counsel of her immaculate heart which comes from the fatherly heart of God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.